Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, I'm going to continue to sort out Harry's pedal box. All right, so those of you watching last week will have seen that I actually got my accelerator pedal sorted out on my uh, race pedal box for Harry, and um, one of the uh, the first quick points I just uh, I just thought I'd have a look at is. Um, I mentioned that I wrecked one of the springs with the uh, with the welder, but the, somebody brought up in the comments, and uh, I didn't really think about it. But uh, I can actually just rebend. It's only just taking the very tip off of the spring, so I just need to rebend one of the coils out, so I can use it to hook up and uh, replace this spring. It's only one, like less than one coil less than what it had, so it should be fine. So. Um, that's my first quick little job, is to just replace this spring, and then we need to start having a look at my clutch. Okay, well that is sorted out, and it's a good thing I have two springs. Um, it is necessary to have two springs in, in this, just for redundancy, just so if one spring goes, I don't have uh, um, uh, a runaway throttle, so, that is good, that is sorted. Um, the next thing I'm going to tackle now is my clutch. Now, it was brought up that um, I potentially, this cable is probably a little bit thin, and uh, I will actually look into getting a thicker cable. I think this will work for now, but it's not a good long-term solution because clutch cables are generally a bit heavier duty. Um, throttle cables don't really have a lot of uh, pressure on them, whereas the clutch is obviously a much harder thing to uh, press down, particularly as this is an unassisted clutch. So. Um, I'll use this for now, but it, it definitely will have the potential to stretch and uh, and not work properly. So let's uh, start having a look at what I need to do to get this fitted to the car. All right, I just um, pulled this kit apart now. There were no instructions that came with the kit, but uh, I've sort of worked out how it's all supposed to go. So they've given me a, um, uh, a throttle cable that appears that you need to actually cut off the end, unless it's the exact right length you want anyway. This, um, it's got a swage on the end of it already, but then it's got a whole uh, sort of range of different size fittings and stuff, depending on what you need uh, to fit it to the car. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just loosely fit the cable up in the car and work out roughly how long I need it to be so that I can uh, start trimming it to the length that I want. Okay, so I'm underneath now, and uh, this is the uh, the standard clutch arm. Uh, it's already obviously connected to the clutch on the inside, and there's a tab on the bottom of the gearbox here that the clutch cable normally runs through. So that's your solid mount, and then it pulls this arm towards this mount. So what I need to do now is uh, I've got some of my fittings, and this one is the right size to just fit through there like that. So there is uh, one part of my cable section, so I'll just finger tight that up, leaving it all the way in so that I can tighten it later. Um, there's going to be a bit of adjustment in this anyway. And uh, my other end, this is the cable end, so the cable will actually go through like that into uh, my sleeve. So I need to trim off the swage on the end of this now and, uh, and start feeding it through and work out exactly how much cable I'm actually going to need um, to, uh, to do the job. All right, so I've just stuck a couple of uh, uh, nuts and bolts on the end of the cable, and uh, the cable is run through now. It's got its uh, bolts either side of this uh, sort of uh, adjustment piece, and then um, there's just these caps that go on the end of the, uh, the hard line. Just put the cap on. The cap sits nicely in the, uh, in the back of that adjustment bolt, and it's run through, and at least the sleeve is the correct length for the car. So now, all I need to do is actually uh, make up the other end uh, on the pedal box itself to accept the cable and actually actuate the clutch. All right, I've done a bit of playing around here, but this pedal already has uh, sort of a, a bolt hole section at the bottom here. And what I did is I just chucked a bolt through with a, uh, a couple other bolts and stuff as spacers. And I've got this, uh, this bracket, this comes with the kit that the, uh, I'll be able to pull the end of the cable with. And 
Basically, I'm going to have to pull it from the back of the uh, pedal box. So I'm going to drill a hole now through the back where I can mount my adjusting piece. And then I should be able to cobble it all together and get it to uh, work in the car. Uh, this is the mounting point that I made up uh, quite a while ago for my pedal box. That's uh, sitting in the right spot. And uh, I now need to make a hole in it so that I can actually run my cable through this uh, support bar. And uh, I've made my measurements already, so I'm going to measure it out from the mounting hole here. Uh, the hole I need to make is about here, so let's measure it out and start drilling. Well, after all that, I, um, I've been wrestling down here in the, uh, um, in the wheel well and uh, messing around uh, pushing the pedal here. And I snapped the cable just in testing it. So that's definitely not going to work. So I'm going to have to get a stronger cable and uh, come back to this later. So I think it's time to start wiring up that sensor that I put in last week. All right, I'm back in here with my Link ECU and I'm playing with the wiring again. So now I need to try and find the wiring I need to wire up my throttle pedal sensor, or actually accelerator pedal sensor as it's uh, referred to. So that's an APS and on the engine is a TPS. Um, now, I've, uh, I've identified, and basically there's six wires going into it, there is uh, built-in redundancy. So there's sort of two lots of three wires. So uh, I'm going to find them now uh, out of these looms, out of this mess of stuff and uh, start sending them down along their way and uh, wire them into the pedal. So I've actually got a, uh, hopefully, a working pedal. All right, so um, I've gone through now and I've actually wired up my plug for my accelerator pedal and run it down underneath the carpet along the, uh, um, along the passenger side, cut it across, and now I've just got to feed it through and plug it into my pedal. And uh, that is another part down. I don't have a clutch, but I've got an accelerator. So I just went in and had a look at why the clutch cable snapped. And basically what the issue was is I'm using this tiny little um, fitting here where you stick the cable through. Um, it's held in by a bit of a U bracket on the pedal and that pulls it tight. And I was tightening up this bolt on the end of it and I'd tightened it up so far that I'd twisted it around a couple of times. So I was pulling it on an angle and using and as the sharp part of it and that's what did it. I've, I've actually overstressed it and over tightened it there. So what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try and do it without actually stressing it. Um, I've got a bit extra length in the cable, so I'm going to retry using it, at least for the time being. I've proven that it's not strong enough for a permanent solution, but it might be good enough for a temporary solution until I can get something else. So I just spent the last uh, 40 minutes adjusting that uh, clutch pedal, getting it in a, uh, getting the cable in a better position. And as soon as I used it, it slipped on the um, on the little fitting. So I'm having trouble tightening it up enough to hold the um, the tension because obviously there's quite a bit of tension that goes into a uh, into a clutch. Ultimately, um, I, I absolutely have to come up with something else. So if anybody knows of a um, uh, a nice thick clutch cable I can use, where I can get one. Um, I've been looking, but everything seems to be motorbike stuff, which I don't know whether it's actually gonna be strong enough. Anyway, I think it's time to move on to something else. All right, so uh, let's give the clutch a break for now, and uh, 
the next thing I need to do before I can get anything uh, started is I actually need to wire in that fuel pump that I put in. So I mounted it uh, a few weeks ago and now I actually have to connect it up, give it some wiring, give it a relay. So uh, let's have a look at the fuse box and also have a look at the pump itself and work out exactly how I'm gonna connect it up. All right, so it's uh, time to start wiring in the fuel pump and um, I've got this very cool classic retrofit uh, replacement fuse panel that I fitted um, a few years ago. It's, it's a very good bit of gear, you should really check it out. Uh, basically it replaces all the dodgy old style fuses with uh, more modern blade style fuses. It also gives you an LED indicator light when um, a fuse is out or a circuit is, is not working properly. So um, it's a good bit of kit. I'm going to use one of the empty fuse spots here to run my fuel pump and uh, I'm also going to set up a relay to uh, to handle it all. So I'm going to set the relay up in uh, inside this fuse panel here. Basically um, it will still be triggered by the ECU so I'm going to have to run an ECU wire up to, uh, up to the relay, run the relay um, through the power from, a, uh, from the fuse and get this fuel pump running the way it's supposed to. Okay, so using this fuse box it makes it quite easy to set up the, uh, uh, the the whole relay and the whole fuel pump setup because some of these uh, panel sections, uh, this sort of area here has full time power from the straight from the battery. This area here is actually from the um, uh, from the key from the ignition. So I've got my ignition source. I have powered my ignition source and powered my um, permanent source from the battery. The ECU has a switch ground and that's how the fuel pump switches on and now I'm just going to send my power down underneath the car to the fuel pump. That's probably very confusing but um, trust me it's, uh, it should be all sorted, it should be all good and uh, it's nice and neat and tidy so let's get underneath now and see if we can wire up a fuel pump. All right, and we finally have the fuel pump. It is all wired in and ready to go. So that is, uh, that is a good step forward. Um, I've been thinking about the clutch and I'm thinking now it's probably the best method is probably to convert it to hydraulic. So that should be something interesting. Um, I'll uh, start looking into that and see what I can do about uh, making the hydraulic clutch. The pedal is already set up to take another master cylinder. So the, uh, the pedal side of things is a really easy bit. I've just got to fit a slave cylinder, which I don't think is gonna be too difficult either. So that should be uh, something interesting to move on with. But we still have a bit more to go before we can actually start it up. I still have to go through and program the entire ECU and work out what each input and uh, the parameters for everything is in it, which I have no idea exactly how to do. I'm just going to work it out as we go along and hopefully you guys come along with me for the ride. But that is all the time we have today. I am out of time. so. Um, as always, do the regular stuff, like and subscribe, and uh, if you are enjoying the videos, you can join us on Patreon, you watch the videos before everybody else, a day early, and um, it does really help us out keeping these things going. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. See you guys.